What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to memorize the unit circle specifically for a test, all right? So I'm not going to go into kind of the theory of where all these numbers come from. I'm simply going to point out some kind of easy tips and tricks that you can remember and look at and patterns that will help you fill out a blank unit circle, all right? So the first thing that I want to point out is that we have three different parts to our unit circle, right? So we have the angle, the radian, and the coordinate. Okay, so let's start by filling out the angles. All right, so this is our standard position right here, right? This is always where we start when we start filling out our unit circle. So this is zero degrees, all right? Then we're gonna go up 30 degrees, right? And then the difference over here is gonna be another 15 degrees, and then we're gonna go up another 15 degrees, and then we're gonna go another 30 degrees degrees, all right? So you can see that the pattern here is 30, 15, 15, 30, right? So then to get over here, it's the exact same thing, right? We're gonna go 30, 15, 15, 30, 30, 15, 15, 30, right? And so on. Okay, now let's talk about how we fill out the radians, all right? So again, this is our starting position, right? This is zero. So we have zero radians right here. And now the denominators definitely do have a pattern, all right? So as you can see, we go six, four, three, and then we just reverse it. Then we go three, four, six, and then we reverse it again, six, four, three, and then we go three, four, six. Now, what about the numerators? Well, you'll notice that these are all simply pi, right? So that's pretty easy to remember. And then here, for these three radians, we kind of have a pattern here, right? We go two, three, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the number on top is just one smaller than what's on the bottom. So if we know how to figure out what the bottom is, we can figure out what the top is, right? Because it's just one smaller. And then here for this quadrant, quadrant three, it's basically just reversed, right? So again, we know how to find the denominators and this time the numerators are gonna be just one bigger, right? So six on the bottom, so on top we have seven, right? So then we go four, five, three, four. Okay, and for this last quadrant, quadrant four, there's not much of a pattern, all right? So for these three, I would just normally memorize them. I would just say, okay, 300 was a five on top, and then these two, well, you see 7-Eleven, right? That's a convenience store, kind of well-known, so I would just remember, oh, okay, it's, yeah, that's where the convenience store is at the very end. Now, let's say you didn't memorize any of these radians. What if you just completely forgot them? All right, well, as long as you know the angle, you can figure out what the radian is, because you can convert degrees two radians. And the way that you do that is, let's say we wanted to convert 300 degrees to radians. You multiply it by pi over 180. Okay, so as you can see, they both have trailing zeros, so we could kind of just cross those out. So then on top, we have 30 times pi over 18. Okay, and 30 over 18, well, we can reduce that down to, well, they're both divisible by six, right? So we can reduce that down to five over three, and then don't forget your pi, right? So then we have five pi on top over three, all right? So really, you don't have to memorize any single radian. As long as you know the angle, you can convert it to radians by simply multiplying it by pi over 180. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about these radians that I skipped over real quick. All right, so again, those that's our starting position, right? This is zero degrees or zero radians, right? Same thing. Now, if we go straight up from the center over here, we hit 90 degrees, or in other words, pi over two, right? Now, if we go to the left over here, we hit 180 degrees, or in other words, pi, and then if we go straight down, we're gonna hit 270 degrees, or three pi over two. Now, remember, in order to go around an entire circle, that's 360 degrees, but if we're talking about radians, that's two pi radians, all right? So what's half of two pi? Well, that would be one pi, right? So that's why over here, half of 360 degrees is 180 degrees, all right? Half of two pi is simply pi or one pi, right? So then what's half of one? Well, that would be half, right? Just one half. And again, we're talking about radians, so we have pi. Okay, so you can see that we every 90 degrees over here, we've kind of established that this is half pi. This is another half pi, or in other words, one full pi. So that means this is also half pi, right? So we have th one half, two half, three halves, right? Three halves pi. All right, so that's how you find all the radians. Now let's talk about finding all these coordinate points. So again, we're just gonna start at the center of the circle. This is the origin at zero comma zero, all right? 
Now, if we wanted to find the coordinate point at our first starting position right here at zero degrees or zero radians, that'd be this point right here, right? So the unit circle has a radius of one. Okay, so to get from the origin to this point right here at starting position, we have to go over one unit and then we don't go up or down, right? So that's why our X and Y coordinates right here are one comma zero. Okay, now similarly for the rest of kind of our, our important points over here, right? We have this one up here. So to get from the origin up to this point right here, we don't move left or right. So that's why our X coordinate is zero, but we do move up one whole unit in the Y direction. So that's why our Y unit is one, all right? Same thing. So to get from the origin to this point right here, we have to go back one, and then we don't move in the y direction. And then the last one down here, right? We don't move in the x direction, we just go straight down. So that's why we have zero, negative one down there. Okay, now lastly, in order to find all of these coordinate points, the first thing you might notice is they're all fractions, right? And every single denominator is a two, all right? These are all twos all over the place. All right, so that's kind of helpful. So at least we kind of have a starting point, right? Now, if we start with the X coordinate, you might notice that the numerator is a three, right? And it's kind of like a countdown. We go three, two, one, and then we flip it back, right? One, two, three, and then we flip it again. Three, two, one, and then we keep going, right? One, two, three, right? Three, two, one. So you can see the pattern for all of the X coordinates. Now for the y coordinates is going to be completely flipped, right? So we go one, two, three, right? Three, two, one. One, two, three, right? Three, two, one. Okay, so you should realize that your numerators should always be different except right here in the middle, right? Those are the only ones that are always the exact same, the ones in the middle. Other than that, your numerators should always be different, okay? And also notice that they all have square roots, right? except the ones, okay? Now, the last thing that I wanna point out is simply making sure you keep track of the signs for your coordinates, right? So as we established, right, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, so that means this side over here is quadrant one, this side over here is quadrant two, this one down here on the bottom left is quadrant three, and this one on the bottom right is quadrant four, right? So when we're talking about the coordinate plane, here in quadrant one, our X and Y coordinates are both positive, right? So these should both be positive, positive in quadrant one. Now over here in quadrant two, you'll see that our X coordinates are negative, right? So then the signs should be negative, positive for our coordinates here in quadrant two. And then for quadrant three, they're both, right? You can see that they're both negative, so that should be Right, we can write them like this, that they're both negative. And then in quadrant four, we have to head in the positive x direction and then the negative y direction, right? So positive x direction and negative y direction. And you can see that right here, right? All the x's are positive and all of these are negative. So if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.